Exercise 11, Creole Parametric 4.0. In this exercise, we're going to take a look at the very basics of sheet metal in a top-down area. So essentially, you could download these parts. Um, if you have the educational license, you shouldn't have any issue. If you have a, a private license, it might be a little bit more difficult. I'm going to see if I can bring it, put up some commercial parts up there for you to grab. Otherwise, an iGest file, I'll drop up there, or granite file, and you could import that. Um, anyhow, as you can see here up on the screen, we have this sheet metal enclosure, and the idea is um, I just want, we're going to go through and see how that's constructed around this assembly of uh, like a gearbox. So just to show you this, I'm going to go ahead and open up the part by itself, and here it is. And with the uh, sheet metal tools, what we're going to do is we're going to be able to flatten this. So there's flat pattern, and there is the flat pattern for that model. And then later on you could drop it into a drawing, export as a DXF, bring it into a water jet or plasma cutter or whatever your uh, process is. Okay, so let's begin. I'm gonna go ahead and actually uh, suppress this part. I will actually just hide it. Okay, so here's the gearbox that you could download. You see there's a pulley and things like that. It's not a really f a functional one. It's just a widget, you might say. And there's a casting that it's all attached to. We want to put that around the casting. So here's what we're going to do. In the feature tree over here on the left, we're going to go ahead and insert a new part. So we go to Create. And over here on the Create Component, be sure to go ahead and label this E11 cover and hit OK. Make sure there's a little underscore there. And copy from existing inch pounds part. Hit OK. All right. And in this case, um, we're going to go ahead and instead of automatic, we're going to go with default, which will drop our parts origin, our new parts origin, directly on the origin of the assembly. And now we just have to activate that part. So I'm going to right click, on, um, oh here I'm going to hit the green check and I'm going to right click on it and find the green star to activate it. Okay, from here we can now go to extrude. And notice we're not starting off with the sheet metal part. We're going to convert a regular part to sheet metal. So there's two, a couple ways you could do it here. Later on I will show you a method where you start off with a sheet metal part. But in this case we're creating part and then converting it. So we'll go to the extrude button here and I'm gonna go ahead and select like the end face of one of these bosses because that's where we want our model to be aligned to. And so from here we're gonna go ahead and steal the edges off the model and utilize that. So we're gonna use an offset though because we want to compensate for the thickness of the sheet metal so it will fold over this enclosure and then we could fasten it down. So use the offset tool and over here select loop in the upper right and select this face right here. Now you're going to have to hit next a couple times until you can see the outside turn a light blue right there. Again it's very difficult to see this and I, I think there's a setting inside I'm sure that you could change the colors if you like um, but you can see it's a light blue. Hit accept and if it doesn't turn green like this after you hit accept Cancel out and try it again. Make sure you get that outer edge, not the inner edges. Okay, so we're going to enter the offset. Our sheet metal is going to be 0.062, so why don't we go ahead and put that in. And actually, our arrow is pointing inwards, so we have to have it go outwards, thus add a negative sign to it. So it will be minus 0.062. Now we could hit the green check mark, and we could see our offset geometry. We could hit close up here. And now if we rotate this around, let's take a closer look what we have. We want now to extrude this. So I'm going to hit OK. And it was already set to extrude. Now here's what we could do. In the upper left here, we could select this item here, which extrudes to a selected point. And you want it to go to the farthest backside point of that casting. And it will completely envelop the assembly and that's fine that's what we want hit the green check mark 
Okay, now that we have that complete, let's right click on the cover, the E11 cover, and go to the open button. And this will separate us from the assembly temporarily while we work on the sheet metal. Be where you can work in the context of the, the assembly, it's just that for this training purposes, I think it's just a little easier um, for you to learn this initially this way. Okay, so now we're going to actually convert this to a true sheet metal part. The way to do this is you go to operations and you'll see convert to sheet metal. Select that and there's two options, there's shell and driving surface. In this case we want shell because we're going to shell this out as an enclosure. So click on shell and set the wall thickness here to 0.062 and now you're going to select, make sure you don't rotate too far, you want these faces, so you have to hold control, select these three faces in front here and then you're going to want to select that back face. So I'm going to rotate with the wheel and push it down and then uh, control select that back face. So that's four faces. So when you're done it should look like this. And you could go ahead and hit the apply button when you're ready. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we want to truly convert this. This is technically a sheet metal part now when we take a look at the model tree or the model uh, ribbon it's all sheet metal tools from this point on but we want to go ahead and separate some of the contact edges so we could flatten it out the way you could do this let's go to conversion we could go directly to rip but conversion has rip built into it so might as well just select conversion and up here we want edge rip go ahead and control select these two edges here and here and you'll see fillets already starting to go in there the bends are actually taking place and you'll see here on the placement tab that you have the ability to put in a gap distance between that so if we squeeze into this area you can see what we're talking about see how it's separating these edges we could select the gap and put in a, per, a percentage of thickness we could select an overlap and put a little gap in there if we want or we could go ahead and just keep it uh, blind and put in precision gaps there or just open and that's what I'm gonna go with go ahead and hit the green check mark and now you can see we have the gap in there so it's separated now over here we have more options so uh, there's edge bends and rip connect and things like that um, the bend allowance can be set so instead of using part settings uh, which essentially takes the sheet metal geometry and utilizes that versus the feature set, uh, settings which you could set up like um, K factors or uh, bend allowances and things like that or Y factors or take from a bend table okay but we're gonna keep it on use part settings and also you have the ability to apply a corner relief a variant of what you might have like in this case this is the v-notch that it's currently going to put in this so essentially if you've ever wrapped gifts those of you who aren't familiar with sheet metal uh, if you've ever wrapped a gift and you put wrapping paper around it you'll notice in the corners you get little ripples that occur from time to time the rip area in the corners here with this notch out prevents that from occurring thus making a smoother sheet metal part when they bend it um, and you have a variety of different options here. You have circular, you have um, rectangular, and you have oblong. And the reason you might use these, for example, an oblong would probably be best suited for a company that's using a punch press uh, with a die. So if you've ever seen a, for example, a a paper puncher, and they're usually round, and the reason why is because the consistency of the the wear occurs, I should say, occurs consistently around the edges versus if you have a rectangular tool and you were punching it, usually the corners would wear out first prematurely before the rest of the model does. So that's what you would use that for. Um, rectangular relief could be used for water jet, plasma, laser cutting, things like that. Um, I've also seen them use die cutting with that. But um, and then there's circular again that's another option or no relief 
would be, for example, if you're doing something for the food service industry, a stainless steel countertop perhaps, and you don't want any corner reliefs in there because organic material could get trapped, uh, thus salmonella or bacteria could uh, develop on there and it could be uncle unclean. So that you might get a special request for no relief. Okay, we'll go ahead and we're gonna keep it, um, we'll go with Abrown and go ahead and hit the green check mark to apply. Okay, at this point now, um, we're gonna go ahead and hit the green check mark up here to apply. And let's go to unbend. And here you could select what face you would want as the, the fixed face that's gonna, everything else is gonna fall away from. So I selected this bottom surface here and you could see it comes out to kind of like an L shape. And that's what I'm going to select as my option there. Um, you have other options for deformations and specialty items. Again, those are more advanced. Um, I'm not going to cover those in this lesson. Go ahead and hit the green check mark to apply. And now you can see your cutout. Now remember, what you could do with this is you could bring this into a drawing in its flattened state and then export it as a DXF file, which uh, the drawing exchange format is very commonly used for plasma as well as laser cutters and water jets. So uh, you could feed directly into those machines or their systems with that. Okay, but now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put some features on here. You saw there were some cutouts that were very unique, uh, maybe not so unique, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and put some of those on here a little different this time around I'm just gonna have some fun clicking on this face and I'm gonna go to extrude and rather than have them at an angle I use the rectangle or slanted rectangle I'm just gonna use the corner rectangle and put one in here and let's say we want to put a little ventilation in here so I'm gonna go ahead and put that in and you could change the parameters if you want we'll put in five inches here by 2.5 and then the offset one inch and the width we'll go ahead and make that point 125 all right and we could also go in and it's not a bad idea to go ahead and put in your fillets or chamfers at this time too I'm gonna go ahead and put in a couple here just to give it a smoother appearance And then we could make those all equal. We'll go up here to the equal button. Oops, wrong one. Control select it to get out of it. Okay, and now I'm gonna hit okay. And just let it cut through. You'll notice they have um, a normal to surface or an actual driving surface. So. Um, what's nice about the, the driving surface, it doesn't come out with a blade edge. So uh, you could tinker with that if you like. I'm going to go ahead and hit the green check mark to apply. Okay, I'm going to make a pattern of that now. So under the editing, you'll find pattern. And we could go over here to direction and select this edge right here for a direction. We're going to put in five and have them spread out about um, 0.375. And we could probably put in seven with that. Okay. And hit the green check mark to apply. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and fold that back up. So we're going to go to bend back. And you'll see it will bend back into its 3D position. And you can verify how that looks. Okay, now we're gonna bring this back into the assembly. Make sure you always bend it back before you go into the assembly, otherwise it comes in which is like you saw earlier. Um, kinda might look better this way. Okay, so we're gonna go over here to find the exercise 11 ASM. And there we have it in position. Now we wanna make these cutouts here. So we have to make sure we edit this part. Now remember when you're back in the assembly, you have to make sure you click on the edit part or activate. To activate the part you want to work on. Now we could select this face and go to extrude and then we're going to capture using the circle the concentric circle tool we could go ahead and capture these edges. Um, in reality we'd make them a little bit like here let's say you want to put a little 
uh, distance. We don't want them equal. And you'd be able to actually specify the offset. So uh, let's put uh, point. 675. Okay, so there's a little bit of an offset there. In reality, that's probably what you would do. Hit OK, and then you could select through all. All right, and now there's some screws at the top here that we want to edit. Uh, we want to actually make the holes for. So select that top base and go to extrude, and you're going to have to turn on wireframe. Or what might be easier to see is, uh, let's see, hidden lines. There we go. And again, we could use the concentric circle. There's one right there. We'll just make them the same size as the screw hole on the casting. And we'll shade that with edges. And now we could just cut those. And again, through all. Okay, so there we have our part coming together. Now let's say we want to put a little flange to roll this up on the bottom so that when a person that's going to maybe change the pulley or the belts um, doesn't cut their hand on that sharp piece of sheet metal. So to do that, we have the flange tool. Go ahead and select flange. And I'm going to go ahead and just select this edge here. Now it goes way out on the other side you could actually use the drag handles to flip it around and we'll make this 180 okay and then we'll only make this 0.125 and you could see how it wraps around there making a nice smooth transition go ahead and apply and at any time now you could go back to your E11 cover and you'll see the changes are being updated and you could click on flat pattern and see what it looks like. Um, I don't always recommend just locking into the flat pattern because it will give you the flat pattern on the 2D drawing later. So for example if we made a drawing from this we could now go to new and select drawing and we'll go ahead and call this E11 uh, We'll just call it drawing. Hit OK. And um, empty with format. Now this is a much larger part, so if you browse, you might want to go with like an E size so that you because really the intent here is to make a DXF file that we could export, bring it into one of the the software packages for sheet metal fabrication. So I'm gonna go with an E size, which is very large. And hit OK. And here's our sheet. Now I could, if I want, I could right click and select general view. Hit OK. Click. And then we should see the uh, folded option here. Um, actually, you know what? I think we do have to flatten it. I was hoping to get my flat pattern view here. But um, that's OK here. Let's, let's make sure. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And if I go back um, to that model, exercise 11, up oh, the cover, let's go to flat pattern and apply that. And now we should be able to go back to the drawing, and I believe it will show up. Okay, and let's go with, there we go. Okay, as far as the scale, you can see it's set to one, it's one to one scale. And also, we could double click on it and go to view display and just turn on, uh, we could turn on hidden or wireframe or actually no hidden. And as far as tangent edges, we don't, we could turn those on to phantom if you want to show those or don't show them. Okay. You could put the dimensions in as we've learned earlier, or at this point you could export this. You could go to File and go to Save As, and we'll see Export. And up here you should find DXF. 
we could preview it, there's our D, what the DXF is going to look like. And then we could go ahead and hit export. And you have your DXF file that you could feed into your, your uh, software for cutting. Okay, that completes that exercise. Uh, there is a lab, actually um, E11B, which is a uh, sheet metal part without using an assembly. So to do that, let's start with a new part. And in this case, you select sheet metal. So we're doing a little bit different this time around. Last time we started with the part, this time this. So E11B. And there's dimensions to follow in the book if you want. Uh, I'm just going to throw together some things here. So I'm going to select the front plane. And I'm going to go right to, uh, let's see here, sketch. And let's say we'll use a center rectangle tool here. Draw it out. And give some parameters. We want to make a, a bracket for a a hose bracket, mounting bracket, that you'd see in the car. So let's go with 5 inches by 2 inches, uh, maybe 1 and a half. Okay, and then we could go ahead and take the circle tool, and right at the center draw your circle, make the circle 3 inches, and then you could convert this edge to construction. And now you're going to go ahead and trim out the rest of this. So you could go to delete segment and delete, wipe out this information. Be careful not to go over these lines here as that centers it. Okay, and now we could go ahead and hit OK. And we should be able to extrude this. And you could see we'll go with the mid plane. We'll go to solid here and it thickens it as if it's sheet metal. Okay, And we could specify the uh, sheet metal thickness or again there's lots of options to choose from. I'm just going to go with the basics here and hit apply. Now to cut this and work with it, let's say um, we want to put cutouts in the top here. We could select the top plane and go to extrude and let's make a cutout in the center here so you want to make it a little bit lighter and we'll go to the arc tool or fill it make those equal All right, and we'll go ahead and cut that. So we'll cut it both directions. Make sure it slices through the whole thing. Hit apply. Okay. Uh, we could also select the back face here. Go to extrude and draw a little circle for so it could be bolted down. 0.5 and again just let it cut through and maybe one more up here just so we could clamp it down the hole. now to find the center here we could go to um, line and do construction from corner to corner diagonal line and now we should be able to turn off construction and go to circle finding the midpoint to lock that in and now we could hit OK and through all okay now we want to flatten it should be able to click on flat pattern and there's our flat pattern and that concludes exercise 11 and 11b.